we go. Hello, everyone. Uh, great to, to see you all again. And I uh, hope you are, everyone's doing really well. And uh, today we have a very special webinar with a fellow Jay Shetty certified coach. Uh, it's pretty. And um, today is a really special one because uh, I haven't covered this uh, before, I think. Uh, it's, we're going to be talking about relationships, getting clarity on your uh, relationship mindset. Now, um, as I mentioned, Priti is a, G a fellow JSHT certified coach. And if you know JSHT, you'll know the school and you know this is going to be awesome. Okay. Um, so before, without further ado, before we go on, I just want to kind of bring in Priti and just um, say hi, Priti. Hi, everyone. Hi, how are you? And thank you so much for having me. I'm totally excited and uh, eager to uh, do this with you all. So, um, yeah. Awesome. So awesome. Priti, um, just before we go straight into the, the, the webinar topic, uh, would you mind just kind of giving a bit of a background about your journey uh, and also kind of the, the kind of the niche that you're, you're working in? Yeah, so, um, well, yeah, let me start. So my niche is basically, um, I consider myself a relationship mindset transformation coach. And who I'm targeting really is the people who are feeling successful in their career. Like they got, you know, they, they're actually doing fabulous in that area. Um, but they find themselves still single and wanting to be in a relationship. They're in their thirties or in their forties, maybe even fifties. Um, and they either are in some kind of a rut and they want to get themselves into a relationship. Um, they want to start going on dates or they are in this process of dating, but they can't, they keep dating and they don't find themselves in a relationship. So um, how to help these people and empower them to put their best self out there so they can manifest the relationship they want is really in my niche. So, yeah. And um, part of the inspiration from why I chose this niche is just because um, it's something that I personally also struggled with. Uh, people around me, um, my friends, acquaintances, their degrees, six degrees, or whatever, uh, it was a thing that was going around. And I always used to remember myself going to networking events, singles events, and just um, seeing the same people show up year after year sometimes, but nothing changing. And I used to always ask myself, like, why? why what's going on here? Why is this happening? So there was always this inner curiosity. Um, and I'm sure, like, there's... They could, in a, there could be some general, generalizations that can be made, but there's also everyone's inner unique story that uh, leads them to be where they are. And so I'll, it's basically this curiosity and the drive that, that moves me towards this niche. So, yeah. That's awesome. You, you mentioned there about kind of the, the, the I guess, your, your clients, the people that come to you who are, um, I guess, professionals, like you mentioned, you know, it could be, you know, yeah, so the, the reason, the, the understanding behind this is more so that, like, I also want to make sure that the, the people are, the people that are interested in this kind of coaching are also motivated to make relationship a primary uh, priority in their life. Like, they're not struggling elsewhere and being weighed down by so many things. But also, there's so many other things. Like, sometimes there are people um, who are so career-oriented, too, that somehow the relationship side gets put on the back burner as well. There's so many different aspects to this as well. So yes. Um, and so, yeah, one of the things I actually wanted to talk about also is just basically the relationship mindset itself in terms of um, like when you, where you are right now in terms of you want to be in a relationship, uh, real, and, you know, some of these people also, if you just to get, if I can paint a picture, picture of what some of these people are going through, um, at this point in your life, you've probably been through something already. You probably had some maybe past experiences that you have things haven't worked out. Um, people around you are getting married. Uh, they're having children. You're still finding yourself single. Maybe you're even throwing yourself into your job. Um, and there was a, maybe even a point in your life where people tried to match make you and now you've noticed the people around you are even giving up on you. You start to give up on yourself. You get more involved in your work. You fall into a rut and the aspect of you and being in a relationship just gets somewhere in the background. Um, but deep down inside, you kind of do want one. And you're also, because you're in your uh, career side of life, you're kind of settled in your ways now. Like you're kind of, maybe you have that permanent job in a city. So you may be less reluctant to move or relocate if that's what's needed you know, in a relationship. It's very hard to fit also another person's life into your life. 
and make it work from there. As opposed to maybe let's say when you're in your twenties and you're still trying to figure yourself out. So you're more moldable, you're more moldable. Like as you get older, there's more struggles that come in. Maybe some of you have been married. Maybe some of you have children. There's other things to consider. So this is kind of where these people are coming from. So my question is when you think about the relationship mindset, like where are you in terms of how you even think about a relationship? What does it mean to you? What are you envisioning when you think about a love relationship? Okay. Um, is it something that has been uh, showed to you? Like where is it even, where is the image coming from? Is it coming from society? Is it coming from the movies, the media versus what you personally and authentically would want from a relationship? Like know how to differentiate the two of them. Also going into a relationship, what is your current viewpoint on a relationship? How are you, when you think about a relationship, is it positive? Is it negative? Is it neutral? Because how you actually feel about something before going in is kind of a big indicator about what's going to unfold in front of you. So it's very important to see where you're coming from and what your current mindset is. And then ideally, maybe even what you would like a relationship to be and notice that gap, because that gap is what you have to work on. So... Awesome. I, I think I, I want to pick up on a few things that you mentioned. There are so many things that you've just mentioned in the short, short sp uh, period of time. I, I want to kind of go through them one by one uh, because there's a lot in there. But before I do that, I just want to kind of tell people there's a chat box. OK, that really use this chat box. If you have any specific questions, do write them or even comments. Just drew, drop them in the chat box and we'll try to address them right here right now uh, in live session even if you want to kind of write it to to me or pretty anonymously just just write it and then hopefully we'll try and address it right now so really use the chat box that's really useful okay um i want to kind of pick up the first thing that you mentioned was about because i resonate with that i resonate with that because um i guess growing up there was this pressure of uh, succeeding or excelling in your education in my in, in my family right so the relationship side of things, kind of like you said, you know, for me, I resonate with that. I put that in the back burner. I was just focused on, on you know, getting the grades and, and you know, doing, doing this master's and doing another master's and then, you know, on and on and on. I mean, it doesn't stop. Yeah. But I got to a point where I, I actually felt like, okay, I'm, I'm, what about my relationship side of things? You know, it's, it's not really nothing's happening. So it really kind of put me into perspective because I really resonate with that. And, um, and I guess throughout, as I went along, I did try to kind of get into relationships, but they kind of just kind of just never really kind of got off the ground. Um, so it was really interesting when you mentioned that, that at that particular time, the priority was something else and the relationship was on the back burner, as you say, and, and that's what happened. And now I'm looking back, I guess, well, that's possibly why, because it wasn't something that was intentional in my life. I didn't, in, you know, I was, I didn't really go into kind of relationship with an intent or of even allowing that person to be part of my journey. Um, so it, it never kind of, it was start and stop, start and stop. So uh, it was really interesting, but um, you know, yeah, I, I completely resonate with what you, you mentioned at yeah. the beginning right there. Yeah, I totally resonate with you too, because especially, I mean, I want to deflect a little bit, especially in the South Asian community, it's like a big thing. There's so much emphasis is placed on your studies and your career, and then you go through the schooling, and then then what? Surprisingly, the guy the, or the girl of your life is supposed to just show up? Like, you know, we're not... <laughs> Then what? It's like magically, you, you just, right. you know, like in the, the, in the films, like serendipity or, you know, whatever films that you watch, you know, you think yeah. magically it's just going to Yeah. Gonna so, this is, so this is the, also an importance of the mindset too, because um, whatever we have been through or whatever we're telling ourselves in the form of any negative belief or limiting belief, right, is so important to spot these things and become aware of what you're telling yourself. Because what really happens is that, um, our thoughts become beliefs and our beliefs programs our subconscious and our subconscious creates that into our internal reality. So that it becomes our truth. And what the subconscious mind does, it, it plays that like a broken tape recorder and is running it like a background program. And that in turn affects your emotions and your behavior and your behavior play out to reinforce those beliefs and the cycle continues. This is why it's important because your subconscious mind um, I'm getting a little technical here just so it, it helps anybody understand how, how this works. Subconscious mind doesn't know what's good or bad. It's just accepting what you tell it 
and it's playing it out in full stream. It just, it just keeps doing it. So you kind of want to spot what these patterns are and then reframe these beliefs into ones that serve you so that you can motivate yourself to go towards the goals. Because for example, like, um, I mean, I, we've talked about, touched upon this a little bit before, like an example of a limiting belief is uh, what I come across sometimes. Some people just feel like there's no love out there for me at this point. There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there that's going to resonate with my world. They're putting all the power out there. They think that out there determines everything. Whereas actually the solutions to a lot of the stuff is in here is what you're telling yourself. Um, another one is that why should I be in a, if you've been in some relationships that haven't gone well, why should I go through a relationship is going to fail anyways. Listen to what that means is going to fail anyways. That is the word is and the word is just cycling in your mind and it's going to fulfill itself. So you're going to see relationships that fail anyways, because that's the programming you've conditioned for yourself. So this is why it's important. Another limiting belief of myth is that um, if I'm successful, I can't be in a relationship or the vice versa. If I'm in a relationship, I can't be successful. And that is also, it's a big myth. And it's basically a, where that where is that even coming from? Maybe in society, we're trained to think that we can't have it all. Um, when I, I mean, there's a lot of, it might have different meanings for different people, but when I hear something like that, I'm thinking that are you, are you visualizing a relationship as a burden? Is that your image? Is that your mindset image of a relationship? A relationship equals a burden. Because if that's what you're thinking, you're setting yourself up to maybe even attract people in your life that are going to weigh you down and that are going to impede you. But a shift in perspective, realizing that the right person for you, someone that maybe like, and of course, how do you know this? You It's, it's through communication, understanding uh, their values, their, their vision of the world and how it aligns with yours. Um, the right person will actually enhance your life and actually maybe even be that catalyst that you need to help you bring about success in other areas in your life. They can You can actually be like a power team, but people fail to see that perspective because they're still thinking that one's going to weigh down the other. So it's, it's, it's how you think about it affects what shows up in your world. So that's why when you have a limiting beliefs, I would say it's, it's important to question yourself, well, why do I feel this way? Why do I fear this? Why am I afraid of rejection? Why am I afraid of betrayal? What is, where does this come from? What is this, maybe, was it just one incident? And then I just, you know, carry that up, carry that onwards for me in the future. Like, where does it initially come from? How is it serving me? Is it propelling me towards what I want or is it limiting me from what I want? Is it preventing me? Because our minds are such a powerful tool and we want to use it in the right way. We don't want it to work against us. Absolutely. Uh, again, just um, just looking at the chat box, uh, Cynthia is asking about limit, limiting beliefs. Uh, are they kind of things that we also adopt from our parents uh, or the <laughs> caregivers? Yeah, some of these things can develop very, very early on. I mean, like as far back as you can go, um, doesn't necessarily have to be from them, but maybe you grew up watching uh, your parents in a dysfunctional relationship and this is this is your image movie screen version of a clip of what a relationship looks like. So now you're thinking that, oh, like, it, you know, this is how it's going to play out for me too. Maybe, you know, friends or families that are going through a horrible divorce or something is just failing and their story now, you're making it your story. It's important to realize that someone else's story is not your story, that's theirs. Your internal map, everyone has a different internal map of their world, your map, your story is different. Try not to project other people's story onto yourself is where part of the realization does come from. That's, that's really interesting to, uh, I guess what, what you're saying there is to kind of allow yourself to step back and say yes. that's somebody else. Even if it's your parents or, or I, I guess relatives or caregivers, um, it's something that I, I, I resonate with that because I've, I've had conversations with um, other people that I've just said, at the end of the day, uh, you are in charge of your life and uh, you can break the chain. It doesn't have to kind of continue on with your, yes. your relationship and your family. Uh, it can be, that can happen there, but I am here. So I, I completely resonate with that, that, you know, it is, if we, if we were not, I guess, aware or careful that we tend to kind of slip in and just adopt those norms that yeah. you know, parents and, and you know, caregivers have done and we, we adopt it and we, we think that that's normal, that that is part and parcel of normal relationships. Yes. Um, 
I, I just want to kind of go. Th thank you, Cynthia. That, that's a really, really interesting oh. um, uh, question there. Uh, Rashmi is asking, sometimes previous experiences redefine what you need in a relationship. How does oh. one know if it's wisdom helping you re redefine or fears in the subconscious which influence this definition? Yeah, so it's really good. that's a really good question. So let me just read it one more time. Um, yeah, so actually, I love your point because you're you're kind of answered your question in a way because a lot of times what happens to us is that whatever ex previous experience we have, sometimes it's very easy to get lost in that pain of whatever you've been going through. But it's so important to um, at some point, like step back from the emotions that you're going through, take a bird's eye view and see what is this experience teaching you? What have you learned from it? Because everything, remember life, Life doesn't happen to you, right? It happens for you. Something that happens, so when it's happening for you, it's there to teach you something. There's something, sometimes if you are, for example, if you keep on attracting the same kind of incompatible, unwanted partners, that's a clear sign that there's something within you that needs to change and needs to be worked on. What are those things? Like, take the relationship from beginning to end. Like, if, you, if, if, if it didn't end well, go back, see, trace and see, like, what went wrong, what 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 were the signs that maybe I didn't I what that were there but I ignored and what made what compelled me to keep moving forward and then learn from that learn from how you can take that into your future relationships and see because sometimes and it, it gets tricky because sometimes what we do is there are signs um that something you know there are red flags or signs and we tend to ignore them because maybe we feel that at some point we have invested so much time and energy into a relationship that we're kind of at a, a struggle within ourselves that we kind of want the relationship to work out because I've invested so much time and invested so much this, but then, and you keep, keep, you know, wanting to propel it forward. But at the same time, a part of you knows that this is not going to work and you have to be able to detach and realize what's going on here. So that's a big part of it as well. I think that's really, really, uh, really good. Um, I guess, answer to, to that question. Thank you, Rashmi, for... for yeah. And uh, I also wanted to, to add something too. Like, so you, on the one side, you have your subconscious mind. And then on the other side, there's also the law of attraction and law of vibration. And what is that? Law of vibration is like, attract, like. Law of uh, attraction is basically what you focus on is what appears in your life, is what you're attracting. So still, if in your mind, in your subconscious mind, you have these limiting beliefs, that's what you're focusing on. You're also drawing that to yourself as well. So sometimes what I have learned, um, what was a missing piece of the puzzle for me was that it's not always necessarily like you attract what you want in life, you attract who you are. So until you kind of do that internal work, if you can think that I want somebody, for example, I want someone who is full of life, who's motivated, who's passionate. But if you are coming from a place where you're not feeling yourself that way about life, that already is putting you at a lower vibration and a frequency, you're not a match. You need to raise yourself up to be the person you want to attract into your life and then manifest from there, which is another problem, another little mistake I feel sometimes people, people make. So the internal work is important. I think that's really, uh, really interesting. Again, I, I'm reflecting on this, uh, in my own kind of personal life, looking back, my previous relationships and even my, uh, you know, the kind of the, 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 you know, we talked about kind of the, the, the tussle between the expectations of the family that you need to do Excel and you devote time and energy into the career, uh, education, whatever it is, but the relationship part is kind of put in the back burner. So like you're saying, when, when that happens, there's no, for me at least, there was no space. I didn't allow myself to, to have that space and time and energy to focus on doing the internal work, mm -hmm. being self-aware of who I really am. And I guess mm -hmm. until I did that, this is where all those kind of, um, uh, the, the kind of the relationships that start and stop happen because I wasn't really kind of looking into me as a, as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, I had these expectations that I projected onto other people but I wasn't doing that work for me. So that's where I guess the, the tussle. Uh, so what, it, was, it wasn't until I kind of switched that round where I looked in and allowed myself to, to be myself. Yeah. Then yeah. things start to, to, to happen. So thank yeah. you, uh, Rashmi. I, I want to kind of just move on to the next one. Next question okay. from Elke. 
examining our love relationships, our values, our expectations, how much, uh, how would you coach approach a couple where one is growth oriented and the other is not? Any thoughts on this? So this is really interesting. There's a lot of yeah. people who go through this. That's a really good question. So this is where like I was, it's really funny because I was just thinking about this the other day. So, you know, this really comes down to like, um, even when you, in, 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 in terms of like the law of attraction and like attracts like in the energy, maybe at some point you guys were on the same page in terms of your vibration. But if down the line, you, I mean, it's important to also ascertain like in the beginning stages of a relationship, like it would be smart if you can ascertain like how a person is a, um, when you're learning about somebody else, are they more of a fixed mindset or are they the growth mindset person? Because if you're the growth mindset type, you're going to resonate with someone who's growth mindset. But let's say you didn't know that and now you're in a relationship and it's going down a pathway and you notice that there's this big discrepancy between the two of you. You're, you're growing, you're, you're consciously evolving as well. And the other person is down here. There is going to be a friction. Now, whether that relationship, whether the person, uh, how you guys handle that is really between the two of you, I feel. But like, it can also be a reason why two people separate. Because remember, when two energies drift apart, it will pull you apart sometimes. So it's very important, I feel, like, especially when you are um, at the beginning stages and you're going, you kind of see how, like I said, it's very important to see how this person, and I'm going to get into this actually in a second, um, how a person resonates with who you are, your values, and your vision of life. Um, a lot of us, we don't do this early on, and we find out much later that, oh, you know, this is not this is not what I anticipated. This is not how I thought of things happening. So it's very it's very important to look at that as well. Um, and also going back something to you, what you said, Camille, it's like uh, with your previous experience that you just shared. It's like that is really important because a lot of us, when we come out of a relationship that has failed, we don't sometimes take the time to heal. So before going and trying to look for the next one, so it's very important to take that time to, if it's forgiveness, like take that time to let go and forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, because that is going to open you up and change your vibration also inside. If you keep carrying that with you, you're gonna carry that into the next relationship. Notice what's going on within you. This comes back down to the limiting beliefs. Like if you dig deep, some of these root, root issues can be, I'm not enough, I don't deserve, I am not worthy. Okay, we have to work on that because if you drag that into your next relationship, that pattern is going to continue. Um, so yeah, having self-love is important because when you have, when you are treating yourself the way you want to be treated, when you are giving yourself love, um, and in love can self-love can come in all aspects. Like sometimes we throw the word self-love around, we don't even know what that means. Like if someone asks you, Do you love yourself? Yeah, of course I love myself, but what does it really mean? So I give you a, you, yourself a big hug. You just have a big hug. <laughs> but ask yourself, like when you, let's say in times in life, when you screw up and you make a mistake, what is your language to yourself? Are you condescending towards yourself? Are you saying stuff like, you know, oh, you're so stupid. Like, how can you do this? How can you be so dumb? Like, what what, what are you saying to yourself? Because that is going, again, in your subconscious mind, you're, you're giving yourself your own self-esteem by the language you use on yourself. If you had a, if you are with a loved one and they screwed up, would you really use that language or would you be more nurturing and be like, you know, accepting your mind as your friend and be like, listen, hey, okay, that didn't go down so well, but what can we learn from this? Um, you know, we did the best we can at the time that we could, but moving forward, I have learned from this and in the future, this is what I will do differently. Like be kind to yourself. Um, there's, there's so many, even setting boundaries, like when you are someone who fails to set boundaries and you're the yes person and you're just looking to please and you keep on saying yes and yes and yes and you put other people's needs always before yourself, that's a lack of self-love. That's an example. Like, why are you not making that time for yourself? Or if you fail to even speak up, like if you're the if you're a person who doesn't know how to speak up for yourself, who's going to stand up for you if not yourself? Why don't you love yourself enough to be that person for yourself? So that's what, when you talk about self-love, those are the things that, depending on what your situation is, look at that and see how you can give it, give that for yourself so that when you are walking and looking for a new relationship, you're coming from a place of being whole. You're not, you're not, empty or voided inside you're not looking for someone to complete you or fill a hole because if that relationship doesn't work out every time someone leaves you're going to be a wreck and you don't want to be a wreck after you know if something doesn't go right you don't want to be that person who's in a wreck maybe yes it's, it's, you will feel pain you'll feel hurt you might even feel weak but you will come from a place of being more self-composed from a place of 
okay, you know, what didn't work? Why didn't this work? Instead of completely losing yourself in the pain, which is what you don't want to do. So the self, the self work that you do is very important. Having said that, <clears throat> the flip side of that coin is that there's no such thing as perfection. So you don't want to sit there. I mean, I believe that you don't want to sit there waiting for that perfect day when you're like whole and complete. There's never, there's no such thing. Growth is always in progress. There's always room to grow. You're never going to be that perfect version of yourself. And now I'm going to go look for somebody. But at least to the, I would say at least to the point where you've worked out your past kinks, you've dealt with them, and now you're ready to move forward. And, you know, when you're going forward in that relationship, being mindful of sometimes, let's say something does trigger you, where is that trigger coming from? Like, instead of just quickly lashing out and projecting your feelings onto somebody else, which can um, take a toll on the other person. Like, if you can get to the point of being more self-aware and mindful and being like, okay, this triggered me, where is this coming from? Uh, what was actually said? What are the facts? And what was my interpretation of what being said? You will notice, uh, it takes a lot of self-management to do that, but you'll, you'll notice that, um, that you'll be able to navigate this relationship in a more healthy way. Awesome. Awesome. Just, just while you were, you were kind of um, answering that, I, 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 uh, I mean, I just kind of just remember to a, a previous relationship that I had. <laughs> okay. Um, and sometimes now reflecting back on that, just sometimes, I, I, you know, there's a lot of, um, I guess, talk about, you know, self-love, that's really important. But sometimes when you step back, you look back, you, you say, sometimes it's the other party that's not really there yet mm -hmm. in that relationship. So hence why things, sometimes things go wrong because, or didn't, doesn't, doesn't go, go through, fall through, is because maybe, it's the, you know, somebody else, they're, they're not there yet. You know, there's a, yeah. sometimes a mismatch. You are mm -hmm. in a particular uh, situation in your life and the other parties not there yet hence why sometimes and that's okay that's okay it's just to kind of uh, for me what i'm trying to get at is just to say sometimes things don't work out and that's okay that's okay, right? that's okay. it's not like putting pressure on yourself to say you know have i done something wrong why you know i should have done that i should have done this maybe i should have not you go you go you go insane in your in your in your mind but sometimes things just don't work out and that's okay because sometimes it might be a multitude of things uh now you know I'm, I'm now kind of reconnecting with uh the previous people in my lives and and they're they're an awesome they're, they're awesome people to be with it's just that yeah. at that particular point in the past yeah. they weren't there yet and that's okay that's okay it's just not to say that you're not i'm you know i started kind of going insane in my head and so is it is it me why did i why what did i not do what did i do um but now you know I'm just chilled and say, look, you know, at that time, at that particular moment of time, you know, we weren't meant, you know, to, to, to kind of be in a relationship. And that's OK. Yeah. There's always a the right time for everything. I mean, this, you know, maybe that time was needed. Maybe there was some growth involved for the other person, too, that needed to love. I mean, if you connect back to people that maybe you saw a few years ago, they're not the same person they are anymore. Right. So, yes, time and the right time for things is very, very important. And I actually... Um, so going back to like, I think some, one of the things that I, you know, a lot of, I hear a lot of people say is how do I know someone's right? They worry, like, how do I know someone's right for me? What do I do? So I wanted to like, I have share like a few tips that I think are important to keep in mind, if that's okay. Um, when it comes to gaining clarity in the initial stages of dating. So like, like I said before, like, you know, get clear on, uh, what does a relationship look like to you and why do you want to be in the relationship? Um, I think the why, especially when you're coming from a place where you're, you know, in your 30s and your 40s and you're not feeling motivated, your why is your motivation factor. How is it going to enhance your life? What are, what is, what are you going to gain? What is it that you need from a relationship? How is it going to help you grow? Who are you going to become? How are you going to, what are you, how are you going to show up for the other person? What are you going to help them with? How even Sometimes when we're in a relationship, it just doesn't impact us. It impacts the people around us. How are other people going to benefit from your relationship? Like there's a ripple effect. So when you get a bigger stage of how this is going to fulfill you in other ways, you're going to feel more of a drive to get back out there and give it your all. Because if you don't have that motivating factor, you, you're, not going to, you're not going to make it happen. You're going to just feel like, so your why is very important. 
Um, secondly, is also getting clear with your core values and um, what really speaks to you. Like what, what is it in a relationship that, what are those things that cannot be broken? Like no matter what happens, these are my values. Like get clear on, was it integrity? Is it reliability? Is it trust? Like what are these things that must have, you know? Get clear on that. And if you're unclear into what you, what qualities and traits that you admire in other people, like, you know, you want in a, in, a, in a partner, think about the people in your life that you already have that you currently admire and look up to, because there's, there, there will usually be a pattern, like certain traits will come out at you. And these are also things that you'll probably warm up to in a potential partner as well. So that's how you can get more clarity into it. Um, also knowing your love language um, and what I kind of say your dating language, um, for those of you just quickly who don't have not heard of the love language, basically um, by Gary Chapman is basically um, there are ways where everybody experiences love and how and appreciation in different ways. So uh, he has categorized them into, I think five main types, which is like, uh, I think words of affirmation, uh, physical touch, um, gifts, um, acts of service and quality time. So it's not that you have only one and not the others, it could be all of them, but maybe there's a priority in what speaks to you more. So it's very important to know what your language is, like, you know, what kind of action or what, what speaks to you and not just what speaks to you, but what speaks to the other person. Cause a person, the other person might have a completely different way of feeling loved and respected. So if you are someone that appreciates gifts, um, you might assume that, you know, because you appreciate that you might assume that the other person wants gifts and you will go maybe and give a gift and then you'll get, you'll realize that the other person won't react in the same way that you thought they would. And then you'll get resentful. So the, what, what happened there is just that you didn't speak their love language. Maybe they wanted, maybe it was okay for them. They liked the gift, but what they really wanted from you is quality time, like your energy and your time. Um, and even getting deeper into like, sometimes we say like, oh, I like it when I feel heard go deeper. Like, what do you mean when you say heard? Like, how, how, what does someone have to do to make you feel heard? Is it that maybe you said something and they heard you, but they're just, uh, they're not someone who gives a response. They're just processing. Or is it that you need them to say something a reply or do you need words of affirmation? So really get deep into what your love languages are. Um, by dating language, I kind of just mean like, it does include some of the, the love languages as well. But in the initial stages of dating, you're not, um, completely in love with the person yet you're still trying to get you're still getting to know them so what is it that what is it that you need to happen for you that wants to make you go on another date with this person like what are those things to so get clear on that too is it that uh initially it could just be physical attraction is it chemistry physical attraction is that what drew you in the initial visit when you go i mean when you go to an event what is the first, like and someone is standing across the room, what is the first thing that happens? You make eye contact, right? You notice the physical chemistry first. You don't know nothing about them, but maybe that's initially what's drawing you. Maybe it's that on the first date, maybe they showed up with confidence and authenticity. Maybe that's what drew you. Maybe they were vulnerable and they opened up to you and you appreciated that. Maybe they um, they gave you their full energy and presence. You know, They asked questions about you. They showed that interest in you. Uh, maybe you notice that you have a lot of uh, values in common, a lot of activities that you like to do in common maybe the vision of your life was in common like find out like how they see their life unfolding in the next next five years so what is it that really makes you want to see this person again get clear on that as well and then um communicate this you know, communication has to be there is getting aware of yourself is one thing but also aware of the other person and their needs and their wants is very important um, so it's it's very clear like you can see like there's no ambiguity the more clear you are the more clearly you communicate and it's sometimes hard to muster up this courage to communicate these things, but it's important that you get there because the more clear it is, the more, the less ambiguity there's going to be down the line. And then be observant because words are one thing, but you need to um, allow yourself to watch who the other person is showing you they are. Not what you want them to be, but who are they showing you that they are? Like actions say a lot. So yeah, you're on a date with somebody. Um, how are they treating you? How are they treating the waiter? Like, look at these things. Like, who are they showing up to be? Because sometimes words and actions do contradict. So these are just some, I think, uh, important pointers to know before going into the game. Awesome. Thank you for that. That's really useful tips. Uh, again, uh, I think the love languages is really important. I think, um, again, for me, I haven't really paid attention to that and uh, now really paying, paying attention to these things because they, they do matter in relationships. 
Um, uh, Pretty, I just want to keep going on. There's, there's more questions here. Amazing. Okay. Thank you, Elke, for that uh, question. Uh, next one is... Um, I've lost track now. <laughs> there, was, there was another one from... Uh, Zandra? So you try to people feed. Where is that? Uh, Zandra, right? Uh, are we possibly attracted to people that feed a need we have or hold a quality that is lacking in us? That's, could be, could be. Sometimes, sometimes like uh, I've heard this a few times, sometimes even the love languages we crave, it could be something that we wouldn't get growing up. I wonder how to, I mean, I'm not a psychologist, I don't know, but there is some literature that suggests that that could be something that you crave later on. And I think it's really important that, um, it's very important to come from a place of feeling like self-love, feeling whole and complete as much as you can so that the, the other person is not really filling up something in you, but you're kind of coexisting together and enhancing each other. Um, because that's when I feel like if something does not work, that's where it becomes very devastating because uh, if someone is filling up that hole inside of you and that person leaves, now you have that hole again, You're, you feel broken again inside. Um, and yeah, you feel broken inside and, and it, 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 it's, it's better to come from a place of like fully accepting yourself and knowing like it, you want to eventually get to a place where if something works, I'm okay with it. If something doesn't work too bad, you know, yes, I feel pain, but this is also teaching me something. It's very important to come from there. So that's, that's really useful as well. Um, I guess it's, it's about try, trying to kind of understand is that particular person bringing in some, like you yeah. say, something bringing something in yeah. that feels a, a, a gap in that, that you have a lack and then you kind of yeah. latch onto that or is it just accepting? Yeah, because a lot of, a lot of, even the, in the, in the topic of loss itself, right? Like sometimes what happens is that we identify the relationship as part of ourselves. We take on, we think it's us. So when you lose that relationship, you feel a part of yourself is gone. And the truth is you're not the relationship. You are you, you're already complete and whole. You're not it. And it's important to sometimes, again, take the bird's eye view and distinguish that. Because people do feel that they're losing themselves, but you're not really losing yourself. I guess it's, it's about kind of being uh, attached, but detached at the same time. Yes. Uh, yes. Something similar yes. to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you want to, you, you don't want to identify something as yourself, like fully love something, fully go all in, but realize that nothing, I mean, on a bigger scale, nothing in life is really permanent, right? Not even our own bodies. So if you come from a place of I'm giving my, you know, this is, I'm going to give and love fully. And what happens, what doesn't happen, I will learn from it and I will grow. Because remember, life, this applies to not just jobs. Like there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. This applies to relationships too. Every relationship in your life that hasn't worked was there to teach you something. If you look at it from that perspective, it'll be, it'll help you and it'll be a little bit easier to move on from there than opposed to being stuck in the, why is this happening to me? Why is happening? Like, again, life is happening to me, not for me. It's a perspective shift. That's, that's a big thing. That's a big thing. Rather than saying, why is this happening to me? Shift it to why uh, this is actually happening for me. Yeah. And, you know, right. going back to even my own, ex like from my own experiences, like it's um <clears throat> very interesting because at the time it, always feels devastating. Like you, you feel like, ugh, when something doesn't work out, you feel that pain, you feel it gutted inside. But um, what I, I do trust the universe and I what I have done in the past is when things didn't work out, I have said to the universe that, um, can you please like, just give me an answer of why you did this for me? What is it, why did you not want me to be in this relationship? What were you trying to protect me from? And I kid you not, it didn't come right away. Some of them, these answers took years, but I got my answer. It's there. There's something out there taking care of you. Absolutely. Again, I, I resonate with that as well, because like I say, you know, when I reflect on previous relationships, mm -hmm. you know, I, I look back, okay, that needed to happen. That needed to happen to allow yeah. me to get to, to where I am now. And that's, I guess, understanding it's all part of the journey. Um, and I guess it's, it's that, kind of, that, that mental shift, that mindset of... Yeah thinking about it as a journey and you are part of this and that other person, your partner, whoever it is in your relationship, it's also part of the journey, part of your journey as much as you are part of their journey. So um, yeah. that's awesome. 
Thank and you. you know something else that just also came to my mind. Yep. It's a little off topic, but also when you're in the initial um, dating phases too, like um, when you're actually about to. This is another thing. Like when you another things I, I've noticed that people sometimes do is that when they're when you're getting as you're getting older, you also kind of sometimes feel this pressure that I have to be in a relationship. I have to be in a relationship. So let's say like slow down. Like where is this feeling coming from? Like what is this? I have to. I have to. Um, you know, even when before going on a date, like some people just keep on because they're coming from a place of I have to go in a relationship, they kind of go on these random dates uh, without even assessing who they're going on a date with first. So you get exhausted because you're not doing the background work that's needed and you're investing your physical time and energy to, to go somewhere. And they, I mean, imagine yourself having a long day of work. Now you have to go and make time for somebody. At least make sure that the person you are meeting with may fit into your world of what you think might work out like if you just blindly go and randomly without knowing anything about the person you might set yourself up for just a lot of wasted time and just like another like oh like this person does not resonate with me at all so what I'm saying is that like maybe take the time to maybe have that phone call us like look at the I don't know how people meet like how you prefer to meet people nowadays whether it's online dating websites but look at their profile see what resonates with you maybe even get on the phone call to have a conversation with the person before you even decide to physically go somewhere um and invest that kind of energy like just see how they resonate in a, in a, sometimes in a simple one or two phone calls you can find out yes or no I don't think I really want to meet this person um and also realize what state of mind you are in when you're meeting the person like when you're about to go on a date why are you going on this date is it something is it that something about the person really interested you and you're like yes I want to get to know this person more or is it like I'm just going on a date because I have to make this happen like I have to make something that pressure of like time is running out um I'm getting older I have to make this happen like if you're coming from a place of that kind of neediness and lack that's going to totally trickle that energy is going to totally trickle into your whole date um you don't want to come from that kind of a place either um are you coming from a place of time past like oh I have nothing to do right now I'm just going to go on a date well then realize like you know the outcome of that kind of a mindset too so what intention are you going into the date with is really also important to know and also what I think some people don't do is after a date like reflect on it like some people just say like oh um yeah, I didn't feel this one, or I like this person, like I want to see them again, but you're not getting clear as to why. Like, so you, something didn't seem right. It's like, yeah, I didn't vibe with him. I didn't vibe with me. I didn't feel it, but get really to the bottom of what didn't, what, what do you mean by I didn't feel it? What was it? What are those, what was that tipping point that made it the overall impression negative for you? Because in behind those things are again, your values. So the more clear you get on what's speaking to you, the more, um, you have a little bit better control moving forward and you're, you have, you're going with more clarity. So there's some things that we don't do sometimes when you're going on these days, we don't reflect upon them. So I think that's important to do as well. I think when you mentioned about phone calls, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking, we, what about Zoom, you know? It's, it's yeah, yeah. Like a discovery call, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> we, Zoom, I mean, call. that's, yeah, I'm hearing a lot. It's, it's, it's like Zoom, I mean, especially now in the times of COVID, like it's, it's becoming such a prevalent thing. Like, um, and that's what it's, it's really interesting because for me particularly, like I feel like a whole world has opened up to me because of Zoom. Like I think I'm connecting now more with people during COVID than before COVID. Like um, because the norm has now become going online, going on FaceTime, um, connecting with people. And it's really a great way to even date nowadays because there's less pressure that, you know, like what do I wear? What I don't wear? Uh, who's going to pay for the date? Uh, do I have to get physical? You can put all that noise aside for a while and just really get to know somebody. Take your time. You're on Zoom and connect. Connect. Have the patience. Have fun with it. And you can make a date interesting. You can have a dinner date via Zoom. You can have your glass of wine and you can have your dinner and he can have the, his dinner or um, some kind of fun activity or a game or make it interesting. You know, be creative. It, it still works. That's really, and really then, interesting. And then, when, you, and then when, you're ready, when you're ready, when you're ready, you can go out and meet in person. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And I think yeah, that, that's why the, the kind of everything's shifted now. Yeah, because everyone has their own anxieties too regarding COVID and if they're ready or not ready to go out yet, and which is understandable. So, you know, uh, use what you have and what's available Absolutely. to you. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, there's a few more questions. I, I really want to kind of uh, thank everyone for, for chipping in with and asking these questions. Um, Cynthia <laughs> is the next one. Cynthia is saying... This is so powerful. We can't have a better relationship with someone else than the relationship we have with ourselves. In the past, I dealt 
a lot with low, low self-confidence, self-worth. And what I realized was that I was being chosen rather than me choose, choosing the one I wanted to be uh, with. Uh, any suggestions on this? Yeah, that it all comes back to like the whole mindset. See, your subconscious, the law of attraction, your subconscious, whatever you're telling yourself is what you bring about. So you're, you don't know this, that your, your subconscious mind is on autopilot. It's actually fulfilling. It's, 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 it's fulfilling your, it, it kind of um, controls your behaviors and your attitudes so that it fulfills your beliefs. And just the way, like when you, you're breathing and you don't know, like it's working in the background or you, the subconscious mind is responsible for that too. Your breathing, your heartbeats, the same way as running a tape recorder in the background. So it's really, that's why it's very important to spot these limiting beliefs you know, notice that how it's playing into your life and reframe it. You need to reframe it to something that serves you um, so that the people that come into your life, you, know, you can break that pattern that people that come into your life don't reflect that old pattern anymore. So, yeah. Really inter interesting question. It's about kind of shifting the mindset of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you uh, being chosen or you actually having control of who it's it is the same that thing. you're life in your happens. life. Yeah, life happens to me, life happens for me. We do have more control than we think. Sometimes. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, thank you. Uh, next one is from Priscilla. Priscilla saying, Pretty, what can someone do to replace a, uh, an unhealthy model of relationship that came from maybe your parents or caregiver so you can shift and have a new model of relationship and what should it look like? Yeah, so that's a really good point because sometimes like something gets so embedded in us because we grew up with it, right? Um, if at possible, like going back again, if you can take a bird's eye view of whose story that is and is it really your story? Is it you, someone else's story that you're projecting onto yourself? Is it because you witnessed something your whole life, you just assume that that's going to be the, your truth as well? Separate the two of them. And um, I mean, also like, I mean, if there is like, I mean, I'm just going a little bit off on a tangent, but if there is something in your childhood that's traumatic in nature, that's, you know, that's heavy, that you really need to work through, through then, and if something that you feel that you can't really do on your own, then I think it's important to seek out the proper kind of help to help you navigate through that. And so that when you bring your back self, like a therapist or someone, so like when you actually come back to the present, you are ready to move forward. So gauge where you are at, you know, maybe these things are not, so deeply traumatic maybe they're simply simple things but take a bird's eye view if you can and we can't do, do it yourself then reach out to the places that can help you do that awesome so um again like like you're saying uh, a coach's role uh is very specific so sometimes mm -hmm. you might need uh, other uh disciplines yes. like a therapist uh yeah. Yeah, he's a therapist. Yeah, a therapist is someone that really goes into your past and and works on everything in your past. A coach does not work on everything in your past. The coach maybe might touch on something in your past, spot a limiting belief, and then help you from there and move forward so that you can achieve your goals. That's really what a coach does. But if there's something really deeply traumatic in your in your past that you haven't worked out, um, and you want to really focus just on getting your past worked out, then that's more for I would say therapy. Awesome. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, next one is uh, Elkie's just saying, feel the pain, but look backward and ask yourself what you learned from. So that's what something that we covered just now about kind of uh, what have we learned from previous yeah. relationships rather than beating ourselves up for it, but shifting to say, what have I learned from it? Um, so awesome. So the next one is Rashmi's again. Now, uh, Rashmi has a question about, uh, actually starts off with a, with a uh, comment, detached need not really be the opposite of attached. Detached could be still from a huge love yeah. space, but yeah. knowing you are separate, which also reduces expectations, right? Yeah, so when you, I mean, when I think of the word detached, I'm not saying don't feel anything. You actually are, you are giving your best, you are giving joy, you are feeling stuff, but you're not attached to the outcome of anything. You're okay. You're coming from a place of wholeness and wherever life takes it, it's okay. You're not so like dependent on the outcome of something. And that's where like letting go of those expectations, but just enjoying it for what it is and giving your best. Awesome. So that, 
really, really interesting. I, again, just I'm just we're just coming up to kind of uh, the hour mark here. So mm-hmm. just before we we uh, wrap up, there's so many questions and so many uh, I guess insights just in the past 50 minutes. And I really want to thank everyone who's joined and and asked the questions. Again, if you have any last questions you want to address, just drop them in the chat box right now. Um, in the meantime, uh, Preeti, I just want to hand it over to you again. You know, how how can people reach out to you if they want to work with you uh, as a coach? Yeah, so the best place to find me is actually, um, it's kind of on my screen, it's my Instagram handle, which is at bestselfforward.pm. Um, and uh, I put a lot of my content on there also. And in my bio, there's just a link where you can actually go ahead and just click on that and book the discovery call. And that's where we can actually on that call assess whether this is the right fit for you or not. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me on there. On Facebook, I also have a page, my uh, business page called Best Self Forward. You can find me on there as well. So those are the three best places to find me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Again, everyone, if you want, I, I highly recommend if you are uh, looking for a coach uh, to be coached, uh, in the relationship aspects of your, of your life, then Pretty is the um, the coach for you. Um, before we, yeah, and I want to, yeah, I, I, I always say I always say this disclaimer because, like, I mean, um, for people who just who are not familiar with coaching, so coaching is not advising. So there's there's a lot of misconception with dating. Co- there are people out there who tell you like how to get the guy, how to get the girl, tips and tricks. Like that's not me. That's not what I do. I'm more about the internal work that's needed to get you moving in the direction you want to go. If you you know so if you so if you're feeling like stuck, how to unstuck yourself basically? Just when you mentioned there, there, there was a film that I, I remember watching a while ago by Will Smith. Will Smith was in it. I think it was called Hitch or something like that. And he uh-huh. was he was trying to kind of uh, I guess coach or trying to get uh, the, these these men into relationships. Um, but again, on off the back of that, you know, we talked about um, identifying with culture uh and i I didn't find with films for example movies you know the 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 expectations of how movies um are designed and we feel that that's something that we we expect in our life you know i mentioned Mm -hmm. serendipity and all these other kind of romantic films sometimes uh i guess you know what what's your take on that in terms of you know yeah so uh, that that, to these things so that goes back to initially when you're your relationship mindset is kind of like how, what does a relationship look like to you? And where is that coming from? Like, where has it been? Is it really your version and your authentic view of what a relationship should be? And how you know your your authentic version is what are your values? What is it that's really gonna to speak to you versus is it something that has been told to you from society, from the media, from branding? Like really get uh, assess where is where are your views coming from? And what is it that you really want? Because sometimes when you, a lot of people struggle between the shoulds and what they really feel authentically that the guy should, this is what I should have versus what you really want inside. And that creates stress sometimes. So the more clear you are of what you need in life from a relationship and what, you know, the, the, the real raw reason of what you want from it, the more clear you'll be. It's, it's, kind of, it's tough sometimes when we mismatch and sometimes we feel disappointed because something didn't happen like we saw it happen on TV. But whose disappointment is that really? And where is that coming from? You know, be be mindful of the expectations that you're posing on the other person. Like, how realistic are they? Like, a person at the end of the day is just that other person. Like, you. One of the things, actually, it's, I'm glad you said this because one of the things, misconceptions that um, sometimes I hear people say is, "I want my partner to be my everything." What do you mean by everything? Like, is that realistically possible? Like, for someone to be your everything, like, can they be the doctor that is going to fix you up and when your health is down? No. Can they be the person, your tennis coach, that's going to teach you how to play tennis? No, they're not competent to do those things. They're people that exist in your life for various reasons. So get really clear on what, maybe you don't really mean everything. Maybe you just want that person in your life to be not just your partner and your lover, but maybe someone to be your best friend. That's fine. Like they could be your best friend, your lover, and even your family, because if you plan to create a family with them. But realize that imposing everything on them is not really realistic. And also, if you put, if you can put yourself in, the other person's shoes, if someone came to you saying, I want you to be my everything, how are you going to feel? You're going to feel like, whoa, like you can't, someone, one person can't be your everything. Realize that there's a place for everybody in your life. And I think really seeing what that person can really provide for you 
and being clear on what they're able to give you and coming from there is, 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 is a healthier way to go. That's really interesting. Again, I, I just remembered about uh, the question that Elke asked uh, early on about, you know, one, one party being growth oriented and the other one not really kind of keen. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's, it's kind of okay. It's accept, accepting that, that that is the dynamic of the relationship. It's, it's not kind of projecting the expectation from, for example, if you're growth oriented and your partner isn't, trying to kind of project that onto them and expect them mm -hmm. to be the same uh, as you are and I guess you know either beating yourself up for it or kind of being disappointed yeah. that the party isn't so I guess that's where you kind of that that that's more yeah that's very I mean it's really like an individual call that you have to make for yourself because um yes like you know how important is this to you like you, if you're in the process of growing and you're someone with a fixed mindset yes you can ex accept that the person is where they are and they will reach where they need to reach in their own time um and if you're okay with that, then great. But it, it's always important to, uh, again, it comes down to communication. Like just communicate with your partner, like, you know, what you feel, what you think you need, how your perspective of things and understand where they're coming from. Because if you have that con continuous conversation and you constantly strive to understand each other, um, you will come from a better place. And then it's your call to make whether, you know, how, how is it something that is okay with you or is it not okay with you? That's your own personal call. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. Again, uh, everyone, we're, we're coming up to kind of uh, the hour mark here. Thank you so much for joining from all over the globe. I can see people from uh, the States, from the UK, from uh, uh, Africa, from Southeast Asia. Thank you so much. Um, again, yeah. pretty. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for this awesome session. Um, Again, we will have more of these sessions uh, moving forward. Uh, in the meantime, if uh, we're okay, everyone's okay, we don't have any more questions. Again, we will follow up. I think if you have any, any particular questions, follow on questions, uh, with, I'll follow up with an email with Preeti's contact yeah. details so that she, you can contact her directly if you have any more follow up questions, okay? Yeah, and thank you Camille so much for this. This is totally a pleasure. Always nice talking to you and I'm really grateful for this. So thank awesome. You. Thank you, everyone. So again, I'm just going to unmute. So if you know, if you want to say thank you or whatever, just goodbyes, all your goodbyes, you can feel free to do that right now uh, before we um, before we close. So um, awesome. So everyone's saying thank you. So LK, LC saying thanks for connecting the dots. Priscilla, thank you. Cynthia, thank saying you everyone thank for you. coming. I'm so uh, glad. Absolutely. Uh, Sasha saying thanks so much. Really helpful. Manpreet saying thank you. Awesome. So again, Peace and love to you always. We'll see you guys soon. In the meantime, stay healthy, take care, and uh, lots of love to everyone. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye-bye.